Hey fellas, right, all the old talk are saying now recording, so we gotta be a little more professional. Fire, 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 fire. Hello, everyone, welcome to another episode of the Chai Factor Podcast. This is episode 36. Um, this podcast is to shine a light on the Trinidad and Tobago diaspora of footballers. Whether it be if you make it at intercol level, university, um, pro level, and international. Tonight we have a esteemed guest who made it at all of the above. Mm-hmm. Um, we have uh, a former Trinidad and Tobago, not only player but captain. Um, I could say one of Trinidad and Tobago greats, Kenman Jones, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing, bro? Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Pleasure to be here tonight. Um, Mr. Thank Jones. You, thank you for coming on. Uh, Mr. Skipper. Uh, a day before. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was not going to say that. Watch me. I'm big on birthdays, right? Uh-huh. There are two important days in our man life. When he is born mm-hmm. and when he understands why. You understand? Mm-hmm. So I am so <laughs> glad that you are here tonight. Allowing us to reflect on your career and your, your contribution to football to this point. And yeah. where you want to take it from here. So, I'm real glad. Trust me. So, recently we saw that you're you further in your career on the sidelines, right? Mm-hmm. So, when did you decide to go further in your life after football as being a coach? And uh, what inspired you to do so? If I'm being very honest with you, um, I had no desire to, to be a coach because after going through such a rigorous you know, playing career, I mean, coming from young from school um, and then various national teams and then leaving that early to enter the professional um, club lifestyle, I had no desire, um, mainly because of experiences, I think, over my international career, at least right away. Anyways, you know, I think coming down towards the last few years of my career, I would have interacted with a couple coaches, you know, firsthand that allowed me to be able to mimic or to feel like I can mimic their application to coaching. Like I said, I've, I've been across many coaches over my career, right. but in particular, you know, these two coaches, they kind of formulated my opinion on how coaching should be blended. Um, I feel grown is groovy. One, one is um, Stephen Hart. Right. Mm-hmm. And the other is Eddie Howe. Oh, um, wow. Stephen Hart is, well, he was our national coach and you know, he was able to impact the, 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 the culture of the team in a very, very, very specific way, I feel. Yeah. You know, especially, especially in the maturity of my um, footballing career as well. Yeah. And then also Eddie Howe, who is not an older person, really older person than I am. Yeah. You know, when I had the opportunity to work under him a short space of time i think it was like six or seven weeks right but his ability to form an unformidable team and system and way of playing and how he formulated his his strategies to to play against team how detailed it was and how innovative it was for me um i think they were the most impactful on my decision to pursue coaching and even though I um, went along and, and started coaching my coaching badges in 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a review of, you know, having that, that VEX money in a, in a type of way. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> the intention wasn't to, oh, I'll, I'll be a coach. And that will be the other stage of my career for the rest of my life until I can't work anymore. It was basically to have the qualifications to enter that sphere if necessary. Um, I mean, apart from that, I, I also went on to, to do um, a postgraduate diploma in sports management because to me also, hmm. uh, being able to blend the things on the field and off the field 
Ex mm. especially with the, the experience that I've had over my career is something that is very, I think, invaluable. It's something that is necessary. Um, you, I mean, you can't, you, can't, you can't deny having the best of both worlds, you know, um, experience and the qualification, qualification if, if, mm. if, 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 you know, you want to use that term. You, you can't beat that back because at some point in time, like I've always done um, in my life and throughout my career, I'll, I'll have to, I have to give back to the country somehow. You know, uh, if it's not on the international stage, it could be in the domestic competitions. It can be within the school system. It could be anything. It could be administratively as well. So I was just, you know... Um, and not knowing which direction that, that, that I still have to take, being able yeah. to have the tools necessary to, you know, branch in any, any, mm -hmm. any area is, is what I was looking at. All right. So, so, I, so as you say that there, was, um, was TV, TV money ever in your mind as something you could pursue? Well, again, you know, um, in my retirement time, early retirement time, I went and did um, a broadcasting course. I have a diploma in that as well. Um, just for the fact that, you know, you can end up anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Was, so, was, the, was the quote, he had more jobs than... Sorry, you're going to say sorry. But, um, no, but to, to be honest, honest when I got home, that was one of the first things that I did, you know. I went and did a broadcasting course because yeah. I, I knew I would have found myself on, on radio or, or TV, you yeah, know, talking about the game and, you know, having a little bit of knowledge to, to be able to express what you want to communicate to people is nothing wrong is, is wrong with that. Yeah, you're looking to do that in about 2023. <laughs> I, I had to finish, I had to finish that up. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm hearing is you have a it's not like a, a plenty for learning or at least a plenty to, to always have to be qualified or prepared. Um, tell, um, yeah, that, you that, you, that, that you not. That you not. That you not. That, that, that you not schooling. Yeah, the hostel. If, yeah, if you can impart some knowledge on a, a, a youngster or anybody um, on, on that continued um, ability to continue learning, what would you tell them? Well, of, if, 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 you, if you stop learning, yeah. you know, you cease to exist. Um, while playing football, I've heard many coaches, I've heard many seasoned players, you know, um, many world-class players talk about the fact that you never stop learning about football or the things in football till the day you die. Not till the day you stop playing, but till the day you die. Right. Because yeah. as we know, periodically, whether it be every five to ten years, you know, football changes. Yeah. So there's always something that you would need to learn, whether it be, you know, coaching aspects, whether it be um, developmental aspects of the field. Now we're in a, in a, in a time where the, the mental development of a person is, 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 or a player is taken or is put more to the forefront now. Um, and there are different techniques in order to help a person overcome fears and, and that kind of thing. Because we know we're in a different generation as well. Sure. You know, not everyone is just going to hop, skip and, you know, do what they have to do because that's oh, what you were made to do, you know. And now you're dealing with a lot of um, emotionally different... Yeah. You might, you um, might have to you <laughs> might ask you why, why, why am I doing this? Yeah, well, and also, um, I think it's with the way everything is going, we're now in a space where, where it's okay to come out and say that, you know, you, you're having trouble in, in a certain area. You want to be able to, to get help and that be okay. You know, it'd be, yeah. it'd be facilitated, you understand, in order to, 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 to be able to provide the end product. Because at the end of the day, sportsmen are like, you know, the gladiators of long ago. Right. Everybody in the stands that come there, they want to see blood, they want to see a man die. Yeah. They're not concerned that that man down there has a family <laughs> and he probably has some stresses today. Yeah. They want to see you fell to blade and make sure you stab a man and kill him. <laughs> Don't let him fall on your sword. 
Yeah. And make sure you kill him good. That, that's mm-hmm. what they're there for. Yeah. And forgetting that they are also human beings. And I think right. in sport, you know, um, that has been pushed to the sideline a lot. And we need to care a little bit more about the human being. But, you know, in regards to inputting into the question, um, it is important. I think for me, personally, I'm a person that I soak up information. Um, anywhere that I go, anywhere that I am, because I think that is important to, you know, to have a bit of knowledge. Um, unfortunately for me, you know, from the, the time that I started traveling, I started looking at everything outside of these shows. Because when you, when you, when you stay here for all your life, you tend to not have um, a broader perspective of how things are and how, you know, things should function. I'm not saying that everything that happens outside can be mirrored here, but it can surely be tailored. Mm-hmm. Right? So mm-hmm. not not soaking up the knowledge and being able to find ways to apply it to to you specifically or to to, to your surroundings specifically um, could be towards your detriment. And I think um, we have a lot of people um, that have been in this country that you know, haven't done, haven't done that. Right. And it has us in the position that we're in. But for the young people, I would say, you know, go express yourself because, and gain knowledge because in what, what we don't understand are uh, the, the many facets that we're talking about football now, that, but sport has. You know, not everyone can be a player. Not everyone yeah. can coach. There are people who are broadcasters. There are people who are physios. There are people who are data analysts. There are people who are safety officers. But it's also around in the sport that they're involved in. And there is a place for everyone. Um, and a, more, than, more than anything else, putting it under an umbrella, these things are part of a football industry or, or sport industry. And it's something that we, we don't have here because we're still stuck in the traditional way of, of thinking and viewing things. Mm-hmm. If you're not a doctor, a lawyer, a policeman, a judge, you know. Something with status. Whatever, whatever you're doing outside of that is very fickle. But mm-hmm. we could see how things are, are changing because in the economy, the traditional traditional marketing is not the same. Traditional job seeking is not the same. The creation of new companies, the creation of, of new economic spheres are happening all the time. Even though the other traditional things are still necessary, but they are not the things that are most sought after now. And maybe because it gives people a lot of freedom to be able to express themselves and not yeah, be sure. buttoned down to the the, the old values or the traditional way of things. You come out of school, this is where you're going. Yeah. You know, you, you are now being allowed to, especially in our in our area of the world, yeah, yeah. you are now being able to be a bit more free and creative but with I mean, the destination of your path. But I mean, look at uh, <laughs> four guys from different professions talking to Kelvin Jones from a different profession. I mean, Social media and um, internet just giving the opportunity to, to well, express but, in well, different ways. I mean, the best you could have get 15 or 20 years ago was MySpace. You're not on high five, five yet. Yeah. So you're Men not are trying to find the password for that today. You know? <laughs> so you, you're, not, you're not, I mean, long ago, you're not going and, and, and get a child talking about, well, I want to create my own website or right. create, right, right, right. And create sure. that. You're thinking about going to school and coming out of school. For the people that play sports, get a scholarship and I think I'm going to do business. Get a degree in business and get a degree in accounting and, and you know, the traditional things. But now, because of how things have shifted, you have a lot of youths now being a little bit more free in, 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 in determining the pathway they want to go down. And that is creating a whole new atmosphere for the younger generation now. Well, to talk about that, um, I, I did see where you've spoken about, um, so you have a business that is the Black, Black Diamonds, is that what it Black, is? Yes. 
So you're pursuing that business and coaching for the future? Listen, let me tell you something. When you have a garden, you just plant all kind of different things. Correct. In order for that garden to flourish. And in the, in the, in the business of sport, all things has an avenue. Um, again, here, the, at the base of Black Diamond, I joined up with quite a few people internationally interested in acquisitions and facilitations of those acquisitions. And, and of course, also, there's a bit of an agency in it, an agency part of it. There are mm-hmm. also uh, an element of it that, that you know, helps restructure programs or mm-hmm. leagues. Mm-hmm. That type of thing. So being able to, to be a part of that, when I was approached, I was like, hell yeah, because I'm in a place where that that is needed. Hmm. You know? um, hmm. So what's, what's, the, what's the stated goal? The goal is to, to reform the Pro League? Oh, well, hold on. No, there's um, what I said. The man like he didn't want to get no trade. I wanted to hear what you have to say before. The aim is not to reform the pro. You cannot. I mean, when you have a hundred year old tree, you can't reform that. The only thing you can mm-hmm. do is cut it. Is that a new tree? Already, it's already stuck in its ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, being an entity that would be able to run a league is what is being, you know, formulated. I tell people that they don't understand, again, because we base everything on, on, on the, the FA. Hmm. The FA is just a sanctioning body. They have, um, they have certain responsibilities. But the way our system is, those responsibilities cannot be put to the front. And then we have no one that is actually going through with those responsibilities, mm-hmm. right? Again, hence the reason that we are in the state that we're in. The idea is, is to just blow everything up and to be an entity on your own that forces everything else to follow. Uh, like like the Super League. No, not no, like, no, no, not, not like Super League. It's something like a governing like body. It's something like a governing body. In a lot of respects, at the end of the day, when, le- okay, let us think about America, right? Um, the USA, that is. Yes. What do you think influences their football and the way things should go? What influences it? Mm-hmm. Um, they need to when, I say, when I say when I say influences it, I mean think in a holistic sense. Oh, right. So that's any vision for the for the for the football you mean, or in a holistic the, sense? So that wherever I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Triple M. What do you say? It's not triple M. I I try to study why people being so philanthropic and all. What do I say? <laughs> <laughs> what is influence? Everything in America is profit. I, I, I know we could find development and so all them kind of thing. Profit. 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 Yeah. profit, profit capitalism. Profit. All right. That's it. That's fair. Uh, making extreme profits and maximizing our know, profitability. You could get you know, right. what I know. I could be wrong, man. No, no, no that, that's fine. That that's, is, that's reasonable. Because that right there, in coaching and speaking to some, some young players of this generation, I asked them a question. What is your motivation to play the sport? Right. Your motivation, yeah. whether it be money, fame, girls, yeah. scholarship, mm-hmm. whatever it is, I don't care what your motivation is. Hmm. Once you have that motivation, that's the starting point. Okay. Yeah. But even though some people think that the purity of the sport is the love for it, let us be honest, across the world, when you look at some of the greatest players, their main goal is not to become the most famous. They want to make it so they could take the family out of poverty. Mm -hmm. And that's some of the, or most of the the, the naturally gifted ones that has gone on to become legends and who will make themselves legends, you know, um, coming into the future. But that's, that's the aim. So if you talk about the love for the sport, okay, if you have that fear to find. But what they all have in common, what they all have in common 
that when you come to play the sport, you have to have the discipline, you have mm -hmm. to train hard mm -hmm. every single day and give 100%. And you'll have to follow the rules too, mm -hmm. right? So don't care what your motivation is, you have to do the right thing. So on the business side of things, if we have to think about, oh, you want to make profit, you can't make profit when you're dealing with business of sport or anything like that in any kind of way like you feel. Okay. It's not going to happen. Right. You're going to have to follow a lot of prerequisites. You're going to have to be accountable. Um, you're going to have to put, um, you'll have to be transparent. You'll have to, 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 to market You'll have to, to, to acquire investors. You'll have to do all of that in order for it to have that profitability. But you're going to have to follow the rules. So, Kenneth, what is it about the TP Pro League, the, that product, that interested your partners and, this, and the investors? Not, nothing at all. So, so how is this happening then? You see, the thing is, right, when I was approached, they wanted me to own a club, right? Mm -hmm. With the long-term view in the back of their mind without really going into details of then being able to come and restructure the league and bring, you know, um, a lot of different elements there that will help it to elevate itself. And, of course, all, all the facets of it, or the development, um, the business side, marketability, all of that. Mm -hmm. And from the moment they said that to me, I was like, that don't make any sense. Hmm. <laughs> go up here and own a club, easy to do. Yeah. But then the structure of the league and the way that it goes on, um, yeah. we don't function, we are not functioning like it should. So from there back and forth, I started, you know, put down my ideas and let them know where I was thinking. And that, I, you could have swear it was my business that I was trying to sell to them. Right, right, right. The, the vision that I have for the things that can be done and where we should be at or where we should have been at, you know, five years after the Pro League had started, they know we were on the same level. So after some, you know, some, some discussions, um, I became a part of the company. I, I registered my own office here that should be able to, to control the interests of, of Trinidad and Tobago and spread across the Caribbean region as well. Mm -hmm. Because the company itself has offices in the US, in England, in Spain, Germany, Australia, and mm -hmm. should be finished setting up in China real soon. And oh, and also, it, so there's so a, a right. global group of... of yeah, those are, those are very good that too. Hands, hands, helping hands. My last question. My, my last question on this is: This is a uh, so this is what vision 2030, 2040, 20. Like, what's the what's the it, vision? It, it can be vision tomorrow, or it could be vision next fifteen years. Because the important thing to drive all of this is, of course, funding, right? And being able to gather up funding from the various um, people that is necessary. Mm -hmm. um, that, that is ongoing. I mean, we're also doing a lot of side business as well, you know, that is taking place of that. But it, 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 it is to be able to build a pathway that you have all of these um, points of connectivity that you can filter talent, you can filter ideas, you can filter business that would help not only grow the game, but also grow investment for, for business. Um, which is also important because at the end of the day, I've always had the, the idea or the mantra that if whatever you're going to do, you don't see it, you know, being evolved five times over and going in different directions, in five different directions, then it doesn't make sense what you're doing. You know, the man that starts a, a parlor, if he's not seeing going from a parlor to a minimat to a small grocery, to then a bigger grocery, a hypermarket, whatever the case is, then, you know, he shouldn't be in the business that he's in. Okay. What is important for us to realize is that you, your experiences have brought you to this point where it has given you a very different perspective to most past players, mm -hmm. right? And this podcast kind of going different 
Crystal how it normally goes because normally as I say OC you just run in front and well, things off. No, no I was ready. That was ready to swing it in so I'll make sure and ask yeah, so I ask you. I want to know. Yeah. I, I want you to walk us through your your memories in football mm -hmm. and what brought you to this point. I have in that 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 yeah. topic. So, so are we going reverse? Are we are we going reverse chronology? We're going the other. I way? can't go reverse so, chronology. So they, so they, so they, so they can't see man to walk him. Oh, I I ask so you you because your experiences uh -huh. tailor this perspective, mm -hmm. right? Well, and, and, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. And this is what I'm saying. So tell us about these experiences that you see as most of us. That's how I see it. Well, I'll start at the beginning. Yeah. To, to be honest, oh, football is my um. Football was my second love, right? Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to be an athlete when I was younger. I, I was very fast. I mean, I came up in the era of... I can feel? Yes, of Daryl Brown. Right. Yeah. Well, Mark Burns, he's right. uh, just an age group above. Yeah. Fana Ashby, which yeah. um, yeah. Um, yeah. Up, up, to the, up to this day, you know, because we went to the same primary school, those are some of my heroes. Right. You know, what primary um, school is that? Montrose government in okay. Shabona. More or less the first intake of the school because the school was formed in 1990 and, and <laughs> then that I went oh, so you, went to, you went to school, you went to school the whole country, boy? Well, I'm a, north, a, north, south, a, north, south, east, central. I'm a train begonian, <laughs> you know, so. That school start off the school, yeah. man, boy. <laughs> and I, I hear you're living as a crime. You're living as a corrupt one thing. It's everywhere. Yeah, school, yeah. school, like, like I said, eh? like I said, I wasn't, I mean, I was playing all sports. I was mm. good at all sports. So for the school, I'm playing cricket. For the school, I'm playing football. And when it comes to representing the school in track and field, I was doing that too. So I was mm -hmm. getting up to the, the, the national level, more or less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then when I um, went to St. Anthony's College, um, they didn't have a track program. I was hoping to go to QRC College because of the track program. <laughs> See because they yeah, they had a they had a, a heavy. Nah, track QRC program. have a very good track program. Like I said, athletics was my first love. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to do that first. But again, the added bonus of you know God being in my corner and already um, forming my destination and pathway, and also my family is you know, entrenched in sports, you know, from, from my dad, from my uncle. My dad mm -hmm. used to play for the army um, and youth national level. My uncle played for the strike squad. Yep. Also uh, very, not very distant, but, you know, cousin of mine, Gus Logie, mm -hmm. West Indies, Anthony Roger. Mm -hmm. um, that played for you know I, it, I'm entrenched in yeah 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 you couldn't get away. I couldn't get away from it mm -hmm. so going to St. Anthony's they didn't have the program you wanted to sprint you wanted to sprint 100 200 yeah. or sprint um, I was doing one two four high jump long jump what <laughs> <laughs> would you even show any man of course to do all that but you was you was you was always tall since primary school no I wasn't always tall I think after. After when I when after probably like form one or form two, that's when I started to spring a lot, well, you yeah. know. Um, and th that was it when I went to St. Anthony's to, to the orientation, right? Mm -hmm. I asked him, you know, if they had the program, he's like, no. But for some reason, on that orientation day, they, they cut the feel in St. Anthony, so it was looking pristine, like yeah. freshly cut. And they had just put on some orange nets on the goalposts and paint goalposts and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... I feel like the same nets on the I feel like the same nets on the board. You, you yeah, understand? Be a be a <laughs> after, after, that, after that, you know, I wasn't even paying attention to the dean at that time on what you're saying. I was just watching the film. Hmm. And it could be like a movie. The person that took me around the school was Nigel Groves now. Right, yeah, yeah. so he came and took me around the school and 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 tell me about programs and football and where classes and all of that. And after that, basically, I just you know fell into what the school had again. So whether it was swimming, water polo, it had cricket, football, basketball. Mm -hmm. I was involved in everything, right? Because at the end of the day, that's how that's that's what I grew up knowing. Coming up to 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 form three, because fourteen at the time. 
um, you know, we used to use the Republic Bank Cup as preseason for all our teams. Well, especially yeah. for the youth teams. So you go play Republic Bank Cup. And, you know, from Form 1, I was playing all divisions up to under 16. Right? Exactly. I was playing all divisions. <laughs> so when this age group playing in the cup here, at this time, I'm playing with the next team. I'm playing with the next team. And, you know, I, I, I just involved. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, yeah, I get what. But it, um, it was there that I was discovered for or invited to screening for the, the national under-15 team for the 2001 upcoming World Cup. So, I mean, when they put my name on the list, I, again, I didn't know anything. I was going back to school as normal. Um, I had a friend who was involved in the training group at the time, and he was like, you know, they keep asking for you because your name up on the list. And I was like, well, I don't know anything. And then he took me there, and from there I started training with the group. And, of course, when you start going down from 200 kids to 90 to, you know, and a certain number getting dropped off every month, I was consistently there still while playing in school and going through that whole process. Fast forward to under-17 World Cup. So, um, uh, not to cut you off, Ken, so um, at, at that age, you were, I, I guess you're still um, probably raw, not um, developed as yet. Um, when you say you're very athletic, was well, well, that your, your best attributes? No, like because the, the funny thing is, when I got to Form 3, I made my debut in Intercol in Form 3. Mm -hmm. I was 14. Yeah. Right? Um, in order to get involved, again, you play on your left. I played one game, I played left back. Left, yeah, you played on your left. I remember. Yeah. Left back and right back. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Colorado and all that kind of thing. But I got this like, like, like I say, Gosh. Um, even where football is concerned, I grew up with a, a, a group of friends and people that played football that we used to have a very deep analytical view of the game. So we weren't ever in the, oh my God, you see that man socks or this man boots or his haircut. We were in, you seeing how this defender doing this and this striker making this run. And yeah, that's how we since, used to... Since, since Form 3? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's that how... That means we're serious about football. Before, Trust me. A little bit before because I, I am a staunch AC Milan supporter. I start supporting them from when I was five years old. Yeah. Never switch. Regardless. And sure, so, let's notice most of the teams like to play in red stripe and shoot. Well, that's an up, man. Well, they come Boy, up, man. Boy, I was gonna talk about that later. This man, that's this man, wearing red, that, this that, man, wearing red and white for about ten years straight. Yeah, yeah, he was always red stripes, was always red stripes and shoot. That's just white. Me. you know. Yeah. But the thing is, is that that is how we were engrossed in in football. Fast forward a little bit, the World Cup come and finish under seventeen. That is, um, went back to school had another year of some brilliant football, um, but also um, being a part of the older age groups, the under-20s and the under-20s of, of national football. And, you know, from 16 years old to 18 years old, over that two-year span, I've been on quite a few trials. Right. You know, in, in, in England, in, in Holland, in Scotland, um, I was meant to, to actually sign for Perugia in Italy right after the World Cup, but I wasn't too um, keen on that because of the at, party. At what age? At what age? I was, well, after the World Cup, I had turned 17 during the World Cup. So right after that, I was supposed to go sign for them, myself and, and, and Nikosi Blackman. Hmm. Uh, because at that time we already had um, Silvio Span. Yeah, he played across. Uh, yeah. Gentlemen, across. gentlemen, not to cut across, right? So the zoom is going to end, right? Oh, kind of, kind of half second. Ah, hey! The budget. <laughs> All right, no problem. Budget zoom, budget. The <laughs> budget, the budget. You have a marketing budget, Ken. You don't have a software budget.
No, that's all right. That's all right. We're working on it, Kevin. No go. Give me a chance. We're working on it now. <laughs> this, is actually, this actually helps us in but, the editing process because we are I mean, having we take chapter and you know might, act one, act but Kenwin, Ken, Ken, mm -hmm. you say it you say it yourself you know you had to do the things to get the investment and it, right course, you know, course, yeah, yeah so you know of course of course <laughs> or you could use other platforms but that's all right all right, that's another conversation. Like, yeah, another yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. We, we had that conversation already. Like, like you have something to plug there. All right, you have something else to talk about. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Uh, hey, like you continue. Yeah, Russia, Italy. I was supposed to go there, but because of parties involved, you know, um, parents kind of kicked me back from that, and I kind of, kind of was happy that I didn't, because I ended up going on to other places and and having experiences that formed my enthusiasm. And, and drive to be in certain places because with that as well I turned down I turned down eighteen scholarship offers just to try and go pro. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I was as, 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 as soon as school was over, you know, I had a group of friends that was we were we were meant to go to the same school. We were meant to go to Yukon. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Julius and them. Julius and Steve and them they went. Mm -hmm. But, you know, life is such a circle that all of these coaches would have come to my house and sit on my couch and try to tell me, well, you know, you, we could find some extra money for you here. You could get a job on campus, this, that, that, that the other. And while my mom's sitting on there and she's watching me and I'm looking at them, that, listen, mm -mm, I, I, I want to try and do what I to do. If I had to get education, I'll get it after. But I want to be able to explore what I think is the direction I should go in. At mm -hmm. least if I try at it and fail, Don't I could accept. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It was my decision, you know. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of parents force their children into certain decisions. And she was like, you know what? Well, if that's what you want to do, you go and do it. But know that these are your options after. Because like I say, my father was in the army. Mm -hmm. And, you know, life happened. I had oh, my first yeah. kid at 18 so, I, I did. I did read about the army being in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, well, that that was my choice. Yeah. You know that if you know going on these successions of trials and thing, if if I didn't make it, you know, I was thinking I have a responsibility. So this is where I'll end up to be able to take care of that responsibility. If, and I part of the least resistance too, because it's our defense was team everything too. So it, it would have been the easier choice. Well, it it would have been. But mm -hmm. since I was, again, because my father was in the Army, mm -hmm. I have um, an uncle who also played for Defense Force, was in the Army as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in the area that I grew up in most of my life were soldiers, right. and they were also people that support football, have seen my journey as a youth coming up. I saw about uh, John by chance, can we? That's yes. Across. yes. You know, I know you're from five, but John across the field. <laughs> I was well, living on it. <laughs> well, well, we used to live on that field. Yeah, then, yeah, of course, of course. The funny thing is, yeah. the, the, the way that I, I finally accepted that football would be my destination was when I was probably like 16 or 17. 16. 16 going on 17. I used to leave Westmore in some school. My group of friends from, from 500, we were all going to school in Port of Spain. Nobody is liming around when mm. school is finished. We're making so crew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the first bus. You know the bus. So my school bus used to open at two twenty. Mm. I used to reach home by three o'clock. That's now. the time. That's the time. Now, don't don't light them up. Don't light them. Don't light them. Don't light them. <laughs> don't light them. No, no, no. Understand? Oh, oh, oh. oh understand? Oh, because you see, the thing is. We used to have Maxis come into our school gate and yeah. waiting for the students I had to go to Port of Spain. Oh, now, okay. when school is over, if you are in the first break of those students, the traffic pathway for you is TV. You don't, you don't have to be stuck in traffic. You understand? So we get in downtown, blaze straight down by city gate. <laughs> get on the first Maxi because, yeah. like I say, my group of friends, we used to mix with the older guys. So people like, um, well, some of y'all would know him, but one name I can call for sure, Ufan Alves that I grew up with him. Yeah. I, 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 I knew Ufan before he was born. When he right. was born, 
So he's like he's like a little brother to me because right, right. I've known him all his life. Okay. And his dad, I used to play football with. We used to leave to make sure and get we we, we got the maximum amount of hours of sweat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean every single afternoon. Yeah. We're not playing around with it. So I had my first self girlfriend after going through a school competition. It was some science thing. We went down to somewhere in Cuba, I think. Had it, they, they had this show. We did it. Find my little first girlfriend from Capri Chima. And we started going around. But it was a problem. Because when I would meet her after <laughs> school in Shogunas, <laughs> when we go home, she would have to wait till I finish sweat. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we have really any type of interaction, any conversation, mm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Needless to say, that didn't last too long. That happened for about two weeks, and then it was over. <laughs> <dope. laughs> yeah, can we, can we that 500 sweat make real stars, so Come on. Real football or so Come on. Name a few now, name a few now. Come on, it's a lot. No, no it's not just my I'm generation. Very regular, Older guys, okay. you understand? So, and we, the, the way we used to do things, it was always competition between the streets and then we would take it to the phases. So I was part of phase two, you know, phase two want to be the best at everything. Now, like I say, I moved up into that area in, in 1988, 89, right? This is when the NAR government, they started to build the community grounds mm-hmm. in areas. Right. I was living right across. I saw the field being, being constructed, the stands, the basketball court. So as an area, that is where we used to live. When the July, August vacation come, every week is a different sport and we're competing against streets and competing against each other. Even down to netball, we're competing against the girls and them. That is how, <laughs> that's how involved it's we were. Serious, it was, yeah. mm-hmm. Right in my street, it leads to the car park of the pavilion where the field is. On an evening, sometimes when we're not playing football, because I mean, sometimes we used to get rough up from the older guys. They want to sweat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The so that area, and this is where athletics was kind of honed for me. We used to run 100s in my street and yeah. 200s using the bend going up. <laughs> in the wrong corner. Yeah. And they would have, they would have an older guy there that would be saying, "Well, whoever wins this race is a kiss cake and a sprite or a Pepsi for you." Right, right, you right, know right. What I mean? yeah. So it was always competition. Yeah. And on top of that, in primary school, all of these guys, Montrose government, Londonville government, um, Shabonas RSC. When it comes to county sports, we are meeting up each other. Mm-hmm. So even though as friends, you want to be able to go and blaze everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. You want to be the king on the island. Yeah. So that competition was always forged and that took me throughout my life. Um, I got to 18, went on a few trials, eventually signing for Southampton. And also in that first year or first few months, I mean, getting to rub shoulders with some players that, you know, were legends of the club at that time mm-hmm. and still my friends up to today. Who's, the, who's that? Who's that? Southampton. Theo Walcott, Theo's an Albertson. was the captain. It was um, Klaus Lundigvam. We had the goalkeeper, Anthony Amy. We had a right back called Jason Dodd. We had um, a, young mid, a young defender who made his debut the year before I signed called um, Chris Beard. He used to play for Northern Ireland. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, we had James Beatty. We had Graham Lasso. Right. I was, mm-hmm. came up playing with Dennis Wise. Uh, old, uh, old, uh, they were older at that time. Well, in football. They, they were older. I remember older, I'm 18. Yeah. It was older, you know, come out here. But that was what they And I guess you were 18. Um, I think mm. Matt Letessier was working in the club. He wasn't there. Matt Letessier, he was a name around the club because he yeah. had retired, like, I think, a year or two years earlier. Okay. Um, so I came up, uh, uh, got exposed to international players. Right. Um, we had a, I had a teammate um, by the name of Anders Fensen. He used to play for Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. With Henrik Larsson and they. So I, 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 I had an introduction into some international players and people who I could call on today because I built that relationship with them from very yeah, early. From early, yeah. 
And then also, you know, my, day, my, first, my first game for Southampton in the Premier League was a little five-minute appearance against Liverpool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Get them trouble. You know, coming and standing in tunnel with the Sammy Hippia and the Steven Gerrard yeah. and the Jimmy Carragher's. You know, that, that you, was my introduction. Were you in awe at all or you, were you just... No, well, this, this is how it went. The preseason, we had our um, curtain yeah. game. You know, the last game of preseason, they always try to find a big game before the season starts. And I can remember us playing against Lazio. What year is this? What year is this? I'm not thinking about what Lazio team is this. What year this is, is this? 2004. Ooh, that Ooh, Ver- 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 and... 2004. No, I think and we were in Chelsea. Oh, man, you were Chelsea. Nah, he was in it. He was in Manuel. 2004. Nedved was still there. Mm-hmm. Nedved was so, there. Concesa was there. De La Peña. So, so <laughs> Nesta was still Nah, Nesta was That preseason game, because normally the Italian league would start a week after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, we would have been like a week Fitter than Fitter, them. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can remember playing that game and we drew the game three, three all and scoring a hat trick. You scored a hat trick. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. So that, 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 was, that was my introduction, really. Yeah. And then going out on loan because, again, me brand new from the Caribbean, still, football has periodization. It has periodization to introduce talent. I mean, the exceptional ones that we've come to know. What do you mean um, by that? Yeah, can you break down that? Topic? Well, for players, you know, when they talk about, let us say, strikers, strikers coming to their peak from like 27 to 32. Okay. That's when they say a striker is in his peak. Right. But in the development of players from young, they tend to manage your introduction to the loading of Okay. professional football. Okay. So, again, like I say, the anomalies that we've come to know in the Hallands, the Messi, the Mbappes, yeah, they yeah, are yeah, exceptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But you would never really see long ago a player really being of note until maybe he was 24, 25. Okay. Understood, understood, yeah. Because they would introduce you slowly at different levels and even your introduction into the first team would be would be measured. Mm-hmm. My sh- so, the so Ke- Kevin, mm-hmm. just to add some context, so you see, you know, it have stats at all showing around these days. Mm-hmm. Salah first down, Judd Bull, youngest to this. You know, Messi youngest to this. I just yeah. glad that the viewers get to hear that a lot of people have stats today because football was different in those days. They, they used to take time to bring the younger footballers into yeah, the game. Yeah. It, that was important. That was important because you didn't want to bring, you didn't want to bring a player with very good potential and throw him into the deep end, and then he he fails. I mentally the impact. Because, I mean, you're, you're not you're not you're not going to allow your child to drive on their own because they get to to seventeen yeah, yeah, and just like that, okay, you just on the road by yourself. Yeah. You're going to go through that period where you're solely introducing them. Okay, well, drive me, here. Take, me here. take me here. Take me here. Take me there. And measure the distances that they're going before you say, well, okay, you know what? Now, within yourself, I could let you go the full way and be on your own in that regard. Yeah. It's the same thing with football. Yeah. You know, um, I have, yeah, I, have a, come... I have a theory. I have a theory, yeah? Mm-hmm. That, as you remember, you go. Players who get more shelter while they're younger have time to develop and more than likely see more of their potential. That's just my view. Well, at the end of the day, like I say, generally with 90% of football, that is how it goes. Right. The 10% are for the exceptional one, the exceptional talent that you see coming to the fore. But 90%, mm-hmm. you have to measure a player's introduction into, as they say, big man football. Because at that point in time, your body would not be able to handle... Okay, because you're always big boy, you're always big boy. <laughs> no, but I will tell you something. Eh? Yeah, yeah. My first year, year and a half, was a very steep learning curve yeah. in things mm-hmm. that I had to do 
off the field. Right, right. Because even though with my natural ability and here being here, yes, I'm strong and this and that, the other. Yeah. But when I go across there and I meet people that in the gym hmm. and doing hmm. strength and conditioning for a few years before me and then I go and bounce up the big men and boy, when you're running to that, you feel like you're running into a concrete wall. Call a name now, call a name. Big man thing. I mean, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of the, the, the older professionals, yes, I would have a natural talent, but I know to myself, okay, I go and tussle up with this person. Mm -hmm. My natural ability is not going to help me to stand for long. Because yeah, you gotta do okay, so. they, they are creating the ultimate product rather than mm -hmm. you just picking a mango off a tree. You don't get chow off a tree. You have to cut it up and you have to add everything to it. In order mm. to mm. as the, 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 the title of the episode, episode or no? As the title of the episode or no? <laughs> but what if you don't like, like Chow? What if you don't like Chow? <laughs> well, if you don't like Chow, you just go and play tennis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <bad. laughs> but that's that's all the ingredients, and yeah, and yeah. and you know these days you're seeing it even more and more where things like that are heightened, where people will sacrifice talent in order to create the perfect athlete. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because you want somebody that if you pay $10 for them, they should be going the extra mile. You should be getting usage out of them. You understand? So that, that is what happened these days. And of course, that is what happened into my um, introduction into international life. I was right. always fascinated by the things that I saw because I've always been of the, the mentality that when I'm finished, I'm coming back home. And I should have knowledge to be able to help to lend. Awesome. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we, we, we're in a unique position in the Caribbean to be the hub of all sports in the Caribbean region. But mm -hmm. yet still, all the strides that we have made from the early days to now is like we went on, we were on that trajectory to, to continue to be at the top. And then all of a sudden, we just took a dive. Hmm. You know? So every country that I went to, um, every team that I played, I, I was just interested in everything. Seeing how fans coming into the stadium, where the stadiums are, how things are run on a daily. This, this was all things I was just soaking in because here we had the platform to, or we have the platform to be able to create that or to have that. Right, along, no. that, along that line, Kenwin, who are the most Rockers fans? Rockers in, in, in which way? <laughs> who are the fans where you, you go on the field and you have to catch yourself like, all right, I'm playing, I'm playing football. <laughs> well, that in itself, for me personally, it didn't bother me because okay. of my introduction coming up, places getting to travel to different places uh, from a young age and playing in front of crowds, real crowds, 20,000, 30,000, supporting youth football in different countries. Right. Mm -hmm. so that helped me to be able to manage those expectations when you go out on the field. You know, I've had the... the I've, 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 I remember one time I went to watch, you know, my, before I signed and stuff, I went to, uh, to watch a Rangers, Glasgow Rangers and a Hibernian game at the Rangers Stadium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it was amazing because I went on trial at Rangers, myself and John Michael Williams. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they invite us to go and watch the game. And it was amazing to me the passion that I saw <laughs> from fans in and around the area that I was. Now, the whole stadium was a rock us, right? Because this is one of the biggest clubs in Scotland. But the passion that I saw from that fan, because I remembered Hibs went 1-0 up, right? And it had this fan next to me, <laughs> white man. He went from being white to totally red. Right. Because yeah. Hibs just, when I, Hibs just scored a goal. Now, if you know the expectations of the Celtic and the Rangers, yeah. they expect mm -hmm. to every single game. For sure. Mm -hmm. and I mean, they on score. Listen, that man was so angry, cursing at the players and just mad. And he went, I swear, myself and Jan, we watching each other. I was like, this man losing it here. But obviously, it's the passion 
they had mm-hmm. all the sport and, 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 and the club and their players. I mean, Rangers mm-hmm. went on to win the game. You know, I, I think I saw one of the best goals I ever saw in my life scored by Peter Loving Kranz. Wow. Right? Yeah, yeah. I know that name. Remember, um, they played a ball for him, a diagonal ball, from just inside the half. Now he's playing left wing. Mm-hmm. They played that diagonal for him on the corner of the 18-yard box. Mm-hmm. That man hit a volley from there. Top corner. You don't want to look for that. I swear, I swear tears come in my eyes because... Of, because I have, <laughs> I have this kind of bird's eye view of it. So yeah, a sunny yeah. play happened diagonal, and he catches it on the volley first time. Bam, um. straight across, up in the top corner. I was like, what is that? <laughs> I've never seen anything like this in my life. Yeah. You know, and from then, because I went to Rangers a few times, it made me fall in love with that club. And boy, from there, I think my drive even got... Even stronger to, 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 to be a part of. Who chose of, of not that. to sign? Who did you choose not to sign, or did they choose not to sign? Um, well, that 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 first that first trial, it went well. I ended up having teammates and friends from that team who I would have met in that youth system, right? And we played together on other teams in England, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But after that trial, we invited back again and. Of course, everywhere when they wanted to sign me, but due to to, to parties being involved, things um you know went awry. Hmm. You know, so that's, that's all I say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm but, talking about I I times, but it's not something that um, you want to dwell on. So I mean that 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 is all part of the experiences. But I'm happy that I ended up in the place that I ended up. Yeah, I'm signing sure. and. <laughs> You know, the premise where it's at. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but I mean, I wasn't thinking about premiership. I still wasn't, oh. you know, such. I was a fan of Dwight York, right. but mm-hmm. I wasn't, you know, thinking. Oh, the premiership is everything because I grew up on Italian football. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Right, right, right. Italian football for me was it. Yeah. You know I know I mean? exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was it for me, and, and that that that's that's uh, my dream was always to. To, to either watch an AC Milan game live or to go and play for AC yeah, Milan because that's who I supported. You know, yes, of course, do I move from Aston Villa to, to Man U and and yes, everybody, everybody in trade out the of course, even Mark, even, even Mark, even to this day, yes, I love to watch the football, but I don't support any English club. Okay, mm-hmm. right, I have right. one club. That, yeah. That's how I'm rolling. I have one club. Yeah, I stick right. with that mm-hmm. club. So, you know what I mean? I could only, that. Yeah. That, that might be kind of heartbreaking to some of them Sunderland fans eh, because they still love you to this day. No, no and, I, and I had the greatest of love for them. But as mm-hmm. a fan supporting a club, I have one. Yeah. That, that's all who right. I support. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. But, Respect that. Before, you know, but as a supporter, that, that is who I support. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Mark, answer a question now. We, we bring up no, well, big quiet in boy. No, yeah, no, Mark. No, bro, I ain't. <laughs> he he, he went to Jack as necessary. I, I, I listen and I learn and I, I, I think Ken will give us a detailed kind of idea yeah. of how somebody set into the bro. Because, like I say, I, I still annoy him. I, I know <laughs> Ken from coming up, Ken will across the field. Right, I am yeah. on inside. Yeah, you know, I, I know all of this slightly, or I know all used to sweat. Yeah, you know, I you know. so when Ken, sweat. of course. So when Ken, when them sweating, we just had a watch. You know, yeah. but but Ken, when I but I but that simple things in a boy. Yeah, that's um, all right. Yeah, nah. with Ken, when do it. You know, I can remember I'm gonna be brutally honest. Yeah, all the national team football games I used to go. Mm-hmm. And people used to have me now as the defender, Ken, when you know, for some reason. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So the Daniels had this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, the fight, the Kevin. Fight, the man on, right through. I remember as I used to looking for Sunderland top everywhere, or I'm a Sunderland top to come out. <laughs> because mm-hmm. we behind Kevin 100. <laughs> what was your best moment as a, as a local footballer, as a, as a Trinidadian national? I mean, of course, everybody will you know, highlight 
you know, get into the World Cup um, as the best moment. And, and don't get me wrong, that was one of the greatest moments ever. Yeah. But I, I'm a person I like to, you know, I, I value all my experiences in my journey. So, you know, um, the, the period of, of, yes, the under-17 World Cup and moving from that to under-20 and then under-23s, I think the experiences that I would have had and gathered, you know, through those times is something that I value, is something that I know for sure that he did in my development. The friends mm-hmm. that I would have and teammates that I would have had um, those lifelong connections and then, of course, the moments, winning games, losing games, drawing games, having the ebbs and flows of, 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 of football is something that I value highly. And then after the World Cup, going through a transition, coming from injury, um, mm-hmm. and then coming back into the fold, of course, documented, going through all the struggles with the Federation and that fight, mm-hmm. but also being able to be part of a team that was helping to, you know, kind of reshape Trinidad and Tobago football and bringing them back up to, you know, a, a level of notoriety and, and, and upward projection. Yeah. And, you know, basically coming and then coming to the end of that, having people that you would have come across and being able to mentor um, not in the traditional way, but, you know, having teammates and people around to be able to lend some experience to was, is, 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 is more gratifying for me because yeah. that, uh-huh. you know, that adds to, or that speaks to the, the, the body of work rather than just a specific moment. Uh-huh. All right. Okay, okay, okay. And I, so, um, I remember <laughs> when I, when I, Stop like uh, just say stop one. You say Trinidad fan or he wasn't. Um, yeah. I stopped watching, right? When, when I mm-hmm. came back home, so I remember we went. How was he gaming? Yeah, uh, in, yeah. Uh, I was no <laughs> when I, I was no when I'm bringing it up. <laughs> so I, think I, I think I think I think I stopped watching and yeah, um, yeah, he cousin picked me up. <laughs> I started enjoying Trinidad football. But I'm talking my sister. I say hey, you're the mother. <laughs> That's my sister. <laughs> That that's something that's something right there. Like I never really pay attention. To. Yeah, um, yeah. I, <laughs> I didn't really have any any sort of you know to take them on thoughts on it because yeah. the thing is right. Like Mark is saying, I I used to leave school. My intention was to go and sweat. Nothing else going and distract me every single day. For sure. On a Saturday morning from early o'clock. You're on that field. That's my intention. The days that I would leave Shabonas to go to school, to have training that starts at 6 a.m., mm-hmm. right? Before school starts to train, I wasn't seeing these people. The days when training finished in the mm-hmm. evening, and I used to have to walk a lot of the times from Westmoreland to City Gate, mm-hmm. I wasn't seeing these people. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah, the yeah. people that, yes, we have an affinity to sports, but feel like you actually own a piece of people and play. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have never subscribed to that because, like I say, when I'm doing the hard work, yeah. all of these people are not around in mm-hmm. order to get mm-hmm. from, from, from yeah. Chicago yeah. to Florida. Yeah. These people wasn't helping me get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? To, to, to go through... The coldness that I had to go through, sometimes not being able to feel my feet. Most of the times, when winter time come around, my my toes are swollen. I have to put holes in my toenails, you know, to squeeze information, and still have to go out and play. Sometimes taking local anesthetic in my injection, in my feet hmm. to be able to go and play. These people are not around. So hmm. at the end of the day. When they criticize, because it's not to say, you know, other players haven't passed through it. I just didn't pay any attention because I know mm-hmm. when I look around in the doldrums, I know what I did to get here. Yeah. I know what I'm doing to be where I'm at. Mm-hmm. And a man who barely does a lap over his steering wheel. You're not doing that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
at no <laughs> point in time, his uh, opinion yeah. should right, deter right. me from doing what I do. Can we now even go one step further? Eh? Mm -hmm. For some strange reason, with Trinidad, Stone John, mm -hmm. international record holder, mm -hmm. you know, with all those international goals, had to face heavy criticism. Yeah. From a, from a group of wagoners. Because it's not, it's not a group of wagoners, you see. It is it's because of culture. a culture. Culture, culture. That's right. not, we are not really football fans. We are oh. not sport fans. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? No. People want vibes. We're carnival fans. <laughs> yeah, we want our vibes. <laughs> We're carnival fans. And I, and I start with no apology. Yeah. Because... Yeah. At the end of the day, if we are so invested, and I'm talking about when, the league, when our league used to run, yeah. if we are so invested in people that play in the Premier League, but you cannot tell me who is the left back for Jablote, we have a yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. We have a problem right there. If us, no, yes. I had interaction with people, right? I had some interaction with people. If we us as Trinbegonians, Mm -hmm. could take a foreigner's name a place for our next country mm. and put his name on our national yeah, game. Mm. Oh. a problem for the, for the England game not even for the England game after, you mean aside after them? we have a problem yeah. no I do not care if you are telling me we have a generation here talking about oh, I'm a Brazilian I support in Brazilians from thing and when World Cup come around, we win in all these other countries' jerseys. Don't get me wrong, you can be a supporter. supporter. But you but will not never the detriment see a Tobago. an Argentinian jersey. You yeah. will never see a Scottish person putting on an Englishman's jersey. You Correct. have to be crazy. Mm -hmm. If it's your club, it's one thing. But, but not your country. Jersey, but that's what we just do here. Yeah. We mm -hmm. want to call ourselves full supporters of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. I don't feel no way. I see you rubbing your head in the corner. Let's go one idea. Let's go come there. Trinidad and Tobago. You see rubbing your head. If, 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 if we are not, not. Yeah. everything full to Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. Correct. We already lose. I remember I got a pirate version of uh, FIFA 2002. Roto World Cup, right? Mm -hmm. I copy it off the sea. It was right only now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, couldn't save. it couldn't save. And I oh, went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know that. I, I went and I, I, I built the whole chain on Tobago team because <laughs> they only had three men. Recognize, mm -hmm. They only recognized three men. Yeah. Yeah. I went and construct everything like that. My computer couldn't turn off a week. <laughs> no, well, because because I wanted to play and I qualify thinking, well, right, thinking, thinking. Uh -huh. That was it. You say, well, you had to buy FIFA World Cup bro, to the actual World Cup game. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. current went and, and I lost everything. And that is because I love my country. I tell you that. No, but I'm not too weird about it. But that's the thing. I can, and, and this is to tell you, like, people know, they don't understand that. We will leave this country and go in the next country, not litter, be on time hmm. for work. Hmm. Follow all the rules, but yet hmm. at home, we when they come back, they'll still wear socks and sandals too. It's, it's, it's our problem. It's that one, that one, it's in my heart a little bit. That one no, feel like it, it can, it's getting closer to home. No, it's not close. No, it's, it's, it's reality. It's what we are, mm -hmm. and how we operate, you understand? But yet still, we want to call ourselves fans of, you know, yeah, football and tennis. Yeah, Actually, yeah, the idea yeah. is just give most love to other people. Kenwin, on the yeah, same pod, I had to tell these people about the Trinidadian culture and our negative culture. I, 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 I just say it proud. They just call me Triple M. <laughs> my, 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 my. They just call me Triple M. That's not why you're calling that. I just had to chastise about the same thing, sir. I know why you're calling that. I know why you're calling that. No, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to argue this scene, but um, I call it I call it being wagoners. And I think in Trinidad, we have a tendency to think that what we experience in Trinidad is, in Trinidad is unique to Trinidad. I, for me, for me, I mean, I mean, look, I could be wrong, right? But, not, but for me... Not special in that regard. 
And that's what I'm saying. And that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, so me being an American thing too, like, dog, I, I see the same thing. It's just people who, when things going good, I remember we was in, we was in university and Trinidad qualified for World Cup. Dog, I pull out that flag, you know. I pull out that Chinese flag, <laughs> where it's a cape. I go in the cafeteria on the international table and, hey, Trinidad, clacks, no socks, all kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. All right. When Trinidad's struggling, where was I? Is, is rail wagon his thing, but shame I think that's normal. You. I think that's normal. I ah, know, shame. Shame. <laughs> you call, it, you call it doom on me, oh. <laughs> I don't believe that is normal. You don't I think just so? Think that, I just more think pronounced that in Trinidad support. because the lack of all support. I think. Sorry. Sorry. I will not... Yeah, that. Yeah. No thing. Yeah. But, but yeah, I like how Ken went come and give a little truth till I remember telling mm. Andre. I do we so had this talk. <laughs> but but Max, but with yours is is I think nah, nah. Uh, what we're just pushing back what, from you is is that it was it correlated but it's not the cause. I think that was Andrea and everybody was saying. Yeah. That it's not yeah. the same thing. But I again we are today. again licks why? Yeah, yeah, they get some licks. So they have a song. Yeah, sorry. sorry. By, by yeah, I know, see, I know, see. Reform since 2015. The man say, the man say, they are fellow with our belly. Can we talk? Yeah, boy, that was a no way. And here was the people I said that, right? That's correct. Right. Yeah, yes, correct. I remember for the 20, yes, 2018 World Cup, I was invited onto CNC Tree to do a little bit of uh, analysis. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Right? Now nah, speak your mind, speak your mind. <laughs> we, we, was going, we was going through that process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then on one of the days, one of my friends... Hey, hold like, on, I can win. I don't know if we're getting into as long, but, you know, I will, I will no, set no, up no, here. No, no. We're uh, coming, we coming out to two uh, minutes here. Yeah, yeah. Where um, the cut it cut? Go. So, cut it cut, I, um, go. I went with one of my friends to visit his mother in the hospital because she was mm -hmm. ill at the time. Yeah. And I can remember walking on Henry Street or Frederick Street, one of them going to the hospital and this man you know in his little Mitsubishi L200 decided to wind down this window and like hey hey Kenwin Jones don't talk about no football again eh? because you ain't good at all and this man belly lapping over the stair <laughs> <laughs> and I was like <laughs> no, your, your, your vest not even fit in your good Watch man, you know what makes me realize how terrible Trinidadians is? My friend, she said, she uh, say, was it Trinidadian way to say, you know, you're killing it, you're doing good. And I like, we're in truth. <laughs> no, no, you're so bad, you're so bad. You're wicked. You're wicked. I said, we're in truth. Oh, Trinidadians are saying, boy, you're killing it, you're doing it good. I was like, the main way is that man, you're a bad man, you're wicked. I tell her, I say, I stop at thinking. I say, boy. Mashing it up. Yeah, I, I, I used, I came to that one afterwards, right? Just know it, guys. Before you finish, we had to step out and come back in. Yes, you yes, see yes, that? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, um, I guess I asked him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah that's about right. We just got a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're wicked, Kevin. You're wicked. You're wicked. All right, you come back in, guys. Fire, 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 fire.